Sorry. <laughs> you were right, Luder. Wrong click. Tell them. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
So, Patrick Cody. Last um, Wednesday, me and, uh, me and Michael45, we highlighted an upcoming releases of him on his most dense floor side. Patrick Coley, who uh, created the best version of I Feel Love in 1979 for Donna Summer, uh, was also doing all kinds of stuff. Soundtracks for gay porn movies, ambient, working with New York No Wave bands, and doing stuff like that. This came out... When did this come out? There's a nice uh, little... Oh, it's a poster, I guess. Now it should be better. Let me know. Yeah, that's why we're talking about it. Uh, Nicola. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Nice to see you, Nicola. <laughs> Nic uh, Seashell uh, Love uh, did the mastering for uh, one of my very first records. <laughs> Took me a while to figure it out. Hello, Spider-Man. Yeah, so this is this is not the most usual that we call this stuff, but it's just an example to show how great of a producer he is and how wide his uh, range was. We're gonna listen to um, his more um, common stuff, like the high energy stuff. Baby 
Jazz record. It's connected to the stream uh, we did uh, with Michael. Nope. 
Sandra, Space Pro. This is the original pressing with a handmade cover on El Saturn. As you can see, this is a collage. Okay, you're gone. Yeah, so this is a uh, sunrise, his most electronic experimental. I think. Uh, I've never heard anything like that uh, from his discography, but it, it, it's, a, it's an amazing record. The other side is a little more jazz, but I thought I'd play this because um, with Michael we talked about the, um, the upcoming, uh, well apparently it's still there, some people have already received the, the um, Beach in Bajas. Uh, switched on the hop. So let's listen to some bitch in Bahas. We did have an unsavory character, didn't we? Huh? No time out for that, like it's bye bye. RTLF. <laughs> so, this is uh, the album. Um, Beach in Bajas album, uh, which has kind of like a, a Don Cherry cover. It's a double LP. Beach in Bajas, Bajas Fresh. From uh, 2018, I believe. I'm not sure. It's just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful music. So that album we talked about is these guys giving their treatment to the Sunra compositions. Yeah, the, um, the cover art, um, I think, is inspired by Moki Sherry, um, Don Sherry's wife's. Her, uh, the kneading she was doing that they used on some covers. Which is kind of very Terry Riley-ish in spirit. And the music is very Terry Riley-ish in spirit. There is actually a, a Sunra reference on this album I never caught. Angels and Demons at Play, one of the tracks there. 
ridden by Lo Sonny's rap. <laughs> The cover is not handmade, the Sunra cover was handmade. Yeah, exactly. By the way, at the point, uh, if we have time today, I wanted to talk a little bit about books since someone last week asked me about about that and I thought it could be a, a fun way, a fun segue into some records and if someone here um, has some, <laughs> some good books they want to talk about maybe we can, uh, we can do that. Cool. Or Sean. <laughs> nice. Something else. Another artist we talked about on Michael 45 stream last Wednesday. We're listening to the fourth album from Fatan Khan Kanan. With a very nice select varnish cover. album is coming out in a, in a little over a month. I would say that her first album is really good. Her second one was a little bit of a letdown for me. The third one was really good, and the fourth one, exceptional. Yeah, Luders, some people ask me about like introductionary books to, uh, to various topics, uh, and um, yeah, we're gonna show a few. Thank you. 
Yeah, I've showed it before, um, as it was for me, uh, I think I put it in my best of 2020, you had. The remote viewer is maybe yeah one of my top three call records. Ah no, that could be interesting indeed.
to no pie, just dirty. So Clyde Lamb is the band out of which Turo Kokorot is a side project. And Turo Kokorot I only have on CD so far. So this is from around um, the same area of these Peel sessions we talked about the other day. This is a 12 inch shingle from the um, from this album. So it sounds really, really good. Heidler did, the, I think it was their second album, Weekend. They were touring uh, and they, they play in Paris at the Les Instants Chavirés. And I, uh, I think I invited them to my radio show back then and uh, I got to show them around um, Paris a little bit. Very, very nice guys. I was uh, 96, 97. I remember them, um, they were really, really into this band called Add N to X. We were looking for records of theirs uh, at the Rough Trade Shop in Paris. Yeah, this is... What year is this? Huh? 98, 1998. Yeah, Toulouse Low Tracks, exactly. Toulouse Low Tracks is a member of Kreidler who's the name Toulouse Low Tracks, a very good pun, has done amazing remixes and quite some good original tracks as well. Uh, a stable performer at the Salon des Amateurs. Definitely, Kaila is kind of like the, um, I, I would say the, the one true crowd, uh, crowd rock band from the 90s. Ah, nice. <laughs> A little bit, yeah. Okay, some jazz now. So we talked uh, with Michael about uh, the A Trio, this uh, improv uh, band from um, Lebanon. Well, this is Maurice Luca featuring Khaled Yassine from the A Trio. This is a very, very good modern composition. Egyptian uh, music, jazz, intro, really, really good. This came out earlier this year. Maurice Luca. This is uh, on Sub Rosa, so it's quite easy to get. Yeah, 
Finally, you're here. We we're waiting for you. And uh, and you got them in English on the other side. also talked about the upcoming uh, Tayondai Braxton album. Tayondai, the son of um, Anthony Braxton and the original leader and singer of Battles. Thank you. 
for him. No, I agree. I saw pebbles in a, a la Fondation Cartier in Paris, in a art gallery, pretty amazing place. Yeah, 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 why not? Maybe tonight, maybe next week. Yeah. Yeah, this is really one of the best rock records of the 2000s, in my opinion. Just look at the lineup and look which bands these guys were before doing battles. You will be surprised if you don't already know. And this was on Warp. upon um, the Braxton record the today I want to play, maybe not tonight, but I will soon, interesting one. <laughs> hey Royce! Ah. that uh, slow uh, slow rock that I think is a little bit different from that but as essential great cover really good on Dim Mac which is um, Steve Aoki's label <laughs>
now a record I showed once. But I don't think, I, I never played it and I didn't go deep into it. It's, um, it's a very interesting record considering who is behind it. back at um, doing his own stuff, solo, Glock, which is a mixture of uh, this and shoegaze. It's such a great track. It's like <laughs> the guy from right doing uh, his own John Carpenter music in a way. This came out um, in 2020. Quite a long album, a uh, long track. There's two tracks on this I really, really like. The rest of the album is good, but uh, yeah, that was quite surprising. It's not like groundbreaking music in, in any way, I'd say, but it's good. It's cool that it's coming from this guy. With all this talk uh, earlier today about George Russell, and there 
Greg Dolphy. I made a comment on Rachel's stream that I I mixed up two records. Very correctly, I need to, <laughs> to clean this one. Oh, I should have cleaned that story, guys. The Outer View, George Russell. This version is that I, I talked about it when I did my video about Sh Sheila Jordan. She's gonna sing on this eventually. Oh, I'm completely getting confused. Yeah, no. So, so this one doesn't have the uh, aesthetics which uh, we talked about earlier. Has uh, the um, it help me, guys. The uh, Eric Dolphy solo, but this is quite something featuring um, Steve Swallow on bass, Pete LaRocca on drums, and the trumpet of Don Ellis there is so haunting with the trombone on Garnet Brown, Paul Plummer on um, tenor sax, and George Russell on piano, of course. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I am. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you'd have that, uh, Alex. And we only got through half of the track. Then it. There's this break where it slows down and then it just pumps up again, like really, really worth checking out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great French jazz uh, album. There'll be some more jazz, French jazz, and French records. Oh, yeah. That's right.
play some jazz and uh, who, who turns up? Yeah, Chris. Hey, Beth. Yeah. You. No. Just listen to this. Oh. Uh... And how the track picks up after. Get this, Chris, if you don't already have it. Side. When sky. The track was great. Now it becomes insane. So I guess it's time to remind you guys, <laughs> hit like and subscribe. And if you guys like the whole show, especially this week before um, me and Michael go to, to Den Bosch, there's a tipping jar in the description where you can subscribe or just do a one shot if you, if you can afford this week, that will be, <laughs> that will be pretty cool. But we have a lot to go through before that.
Anton Bruin. avant-garde Jew Harp record. <laughs> Thank you. 
it's nice if you like the video. If not, Avant-garde, electronic, sound art, post-punk, a lot of great stuff on that label. Highly, highly collectible. Um, I'm after quite a few of them. I have quite a few, but it's getting really difficult to get them nowadays. But uh, Igloo, really, look it up. The, I would say half of their catalog is worth having. Oh, that was um, that was Sheila Jordan on this. Thank you, Robert. Thank you very much, Robert. It's good, Christopher. So, on Michael's stream, we talked about this upcoming um, jazz clan record from uh, South Africa. And um, I'm going to play a record I already talked about. It's, it's one of my favorite jazz records. It's, it is very cheap. Or well, at least it was uh, last time I did uh, talk about it. Uh, this is getting Otaker. <laughs> this is so good. The electric percussions on this are so good. Yeah, of course. I'll be showing you uh, talking about something like elect French electronics, by the way. Something quite special. Hello, you know. One, uh, you so yeah, I'm gonna play a record featuring some of the players um, from the Cape Town scene of jazz, who is uh, an incredible jazz album. I just can't stop playing this. This used to be super cheap, by the way. It's, maybe it still is. Yeah. 
Yeah, I was meaning um, to talk a little bit about... Um, oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. It's not my fault, or maybe it is. <laughs> so yeah, I wanted to talk about a few books, but uh, I'll put the next record on and then... Then we talk about some some books that can be helpful to to get into a lot of this. Yeah. in Paris. Uh, I saw her twice with Steve Swallow as a duo. She's old but she's still great. I mean, or last I saw her. Because uh, in my life I probably did at least that many shows. <laughs> and it's a time machine. Music is a time machine, so we're just going back and forth. Which album? Yeah, Garasso is the one doing the, um, uh, all the, um, the wind instruments. And um, Jan van Riemenent is doing all the electronics. Uh, Alex is getting this one. <laughs> yeah. Alex, so you're getting this? Thank <laughs> you. 
Bernice, you burps, Alex. Favorite dollar brand record playing right now. I'm glad you liked it, Royce. I hope uh, <laughs> you like trippy music. The Journey, composed by uh, Dollar Brand, and for me this is, uh, in a weird way, I find a kinship between this and uh, Eric Dolphy, in the sense that you get all these great players doing all this. And um, Dollar Brand, he just does that piano loop throughout the whole track. He also had some saxophone. Soprano, of course, my favorite. But yeah, this, this is just an insane record.
So yes, I wanted to talk a little bit about a few books. Firstly, uh, when I, I do these streams with, uh, with Michael, there's, and even uh, some of, uh, <laughs> of the people at Rachel's, they talk about all the stuff I play as stunty music. <laughs> well, it, it really isn't in, in so many ways, but maybe <laughs> in some small ways. But my point is that I guess a lot of people find, uh, don't know where to start, like uh, where this is, um, all this, like the psychedelic nature of a lot of music that is not the traditional 60s psych rock. So, I want to talk about this book, Ocean of Sound, by David Toop. Ambient music, imaginary world, and voices from the ether. This is from 96. David Toop is a great musician. Um, he's done uh, lots of different... He's done improv, electronic music, fourth world music, jazz, ambient, just about anything. His music is really good, but sometimes I feel that he wants to have too many ideas because he has so many influences, a little bit like what uh, we try to do here. And by no means is this like a historical book about all this, but um, this gives you entry points to many sides of, of the music we're talking about here often. Sure, the, um, the main door here is ambient, but the word ambient there in the broadest and widest acceptance of, um, of what it could be. I would say that it's not necessarily a book that you need if you are um, already really into that. You won't learn too much. There's a lot of anecdotes uh, that are quite cool, but this is yeah, this is a really good book to to get a global view of how jazz connects with ambient, with techno, 
with dub, with uh, post-punk, etc. And about post-punk, I mean, uh -huh, where is it here? About post-punk, you need this, rip it up and start again, by Simon Rain Reynolds. This is kind of um, a very good book to read with this. Post-punk, 1978-1984. This is a quite a big book. And yeah, it, it is, this one is really, will give you a lot of um, the historical ground, but also some personal insights into that. The first one is called Ocean of Sound, David Tube. And uh, what else? Someone asked me last week also about a, if there was a good book about techno. There are ones that like will give you an introduction to techno that, that are quite good on a historical level. I read a book last year that I find really, really good. It's more... UK focused. Join the future. Bleep techno British based music. This is a really, really good book that shows the connections between the Jamaican sound systems from um, Bristol and uh, from Sheffield, and also how a lot of the early new wave, minimal wave, like. Ultravox, stuff like that, how um, how British techno came to be in its very specific nature, like the bleep techno of LFO and the, tech, the Detroit techno from Black Dog and of course a guy called Gerald and of course, of course, Robert Gordon from the Forge Masters who did the very first world record. Yeah, this is, um, I think in a way it is, it, many people would think it's too niche to recommend, but it's actually pretty good to start with. It's not, this is not the start of it all, but in a way it is uh, from a, a very specific uh, perspective. Another good book um, about hip hop, but way more than just that. Skis Fernando Jr. The New Beats. Skis Fernando is the um, guy who ran the label from New York. Um, <laughs> uh, shit, World Sound. He's also known as Spectre, doing dub, hip hop, industrial. And this is also a history of the traditions of hip hop dating back from the the Jamaican sound system of Jamaica and who, what was the, the place of the DJ and the MC there, how it got inverted when it reached New York in the late 70s. And it talks about hip hop from a very wider, wider perspective than the usual, like East Coast, West Coast. This connects this to a much, much bigger range of uh, music in a very cool way, very interesting way. Very, it will give you a more personal insight. And uh, yeah, Skis Fernando, the new beats. And um, yeah, I've got lots of books there, but like another one, like as I show library soundtracks quite often, uh, these uh, music records of music for the screen, which uh, we'll, we'll get to that tonight a little bit if we get the time. Uh, brain ticket. Here is probably the first book that helped people figure out a lot about library music, which is a more of a coffee table book with some uh, essays, but lots of 
the covers of the different labels. Yeah, Bass Incursion featuring um, featuring what's the guy from uh, Led Zeppelin? Not Robert Plant, but the other guy. He plays the guitar on this. And lots of it. And with essays from lots of the good DJs like uh, Stasis. Uh, I think also, well, like, uh, there's a new edition of this, an expanded one. This is the first one featuring over 325 sleeves plus an exclusive CD. And this was compiled by Johnny Trunk from Trunk Records. Very, very, very cool book. And yeah, I could talk, I have, I brought so many books here, but like, yeah, books about artists, like, but this is less interesting in a way. Or, yeah. This book is actually pretty good. This is a book for collectors, which is like the, um, the going price for jazz, European jazz records. This is quite old, so it's out of date, but it's a very good database of European jazz that people don't really know about outside of France uh, or like Germany, Italy. Yeah, this is like a treasure of information. Then you have to do a lot of work yourself after that because it says nothing about the music, but still very good. And lastly, for those who think that, uh, yeah, Jimmy Page, Marcos, sorry, Jimmy Page plays on that, uh, on that um, Basil Kershin record. Um, a book about someone journey into that music it's someone who might be watching tonight he, I know she, he does sometimes it's uh, about the meeting of Steve Davis and uh, Cavus Torabi who plays in Gong and various uh, other bands Steve Davis is a uh, um, multiple world uh, champion of snooker and uh, an avid lover of music especially Canterbury rock but not exclusively and he has a band with Cavus and with um, Michael York from um, from Coil, the Utopian Strong, which I played a few times on this show. And it's really a fantastic band, fantastic project. And this is a weird book. The, the fact that it exists is so cool because it's um, it tells the journey of someone who really gets deeper and deeper into that music through his friend. Cabus, but also through his various experiences. So it's it's a biography with some uh, some pretty cool pictures as well. How uh, Steve Davis joined Magma at one point, <laughs> and um, yeah. And lastly, an interesting book because it gives you in or it gave me a very bad picture of the the guy, but it's still an interesting book. Brian Eno's journal, a year, um, like, 95, 90, yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's uh, for 1995. So it's, um, it's basically his diary and his interactions with other musicians he produced and all that. And um, it gives you a picture of him as not a nice person, in my opinion, but it's still, still, Still pretty good insight in the mind and the ways of someone who who lives music in so many ways. And I could go on for hours about books like that. I don't read book music books anymore or very seldom. Because now I, I've met so many musicians. I really like to. <laughs> I, I had like, yeah, the luxury of getting uh, the stories from the mouth <laughs> of the musicians. Yeah, yeah, it's a good book. 808. I know it. It's a really good book, actually. 
And uh, if you want to read something about European techno and German techno, of course, it has to go back to Kraftwerk and Palais Schomburg and DAF and, uh, and all that. Because it's all connected. I, I think, I hope that you guys, if you don't already know that, this show is helping uh, you figure this out. Huh? How about that record? Isn't it just the best? All right. To a certain degree, and we'll talk about that. Like Otaker being not predictable because this is almost like a jazz track. This is a EP7 part two. It's a two part EP from uh, 97, I think. 97 or 98, someone correct me. Yeah. Nice, Michael. You will read about Kratberg, but not the words from Ralph. <laughs> oh, nice. I bought this when it came out, and th this track fucked me up. That you could, um, in. Um, modern like electro music do something that rich with so many parts that's a, that's a very that's a pivotal track i think for Otaker. For mostly to jazz. Can you hear the jazz in this? And this is pure electronic. Five, yeah. 
Uh, Bifar is not, yeah, I love them all, but my favorite is uh, Classic Slide from that time. Oh, for sure, Tracy, KPM has very few good uh, records, maybe a dozen compared to the vast number they have. Which country are you in, uh, Tracy? That might be more <laughs> helpful to, to give you direction from where you can find the stuff. But if you're still here, I'm curious to hear what you think of that. And if Aaron, the metal theologian, that as much. Yeah. I mean, you are. This is amazing. So playful. I've never talked with is uh, Kevin Sanderson, and of course I, I talked about that. of the next record we're going to listen to. I was talking about uh, this record with Chris Cole um, some time ago, last week actually, I think. And uh, he told me he, he's been after that one for quite some time. Thank <laughs> you. 
Bono Mini is also behind the record I played last week of um, Benoit Wiedmann, the, um, the guy from Magma. Uh, Bruno Mini is like an outsider. He, he died some years ago. He was the partner of uh, Emmanuel Parona. And um, he's behind a lot of the, the production on the, the Seul records of the, the early 70s, late 70s. And he was like an electronic wizard. And this is his small um, album under his name. Total outsider. No, uh, he had nothing to do with the GRM or anything. And uh, the notes on this is, are great, by the way, as it references the futurists from Italy, 1911. And I'm playing the track that is the most <laughs> romantic in a way. But it, it, it's a heavy record. Hi. You're welcome. Banana fish, yeah, it was so, it was, yeah. Ah, uh, they're back. <laughs> <laughs> weird Ex real experimental oh yeah you're right uh, Alex <laughs> yeah and guess who sold uh, who sold him a copy of that huh? that's one of the four records I sold to to uh, Keith Keith Furlton, Furlton Whitman on eBay back in the day. No, yeah, on eBay it was, I think. I bought some stuff from him as well, of course. <laughs> yes, Ed. For those who don't know, Creel Pwn is um, a uh, bootleg label of CDR, uh, CDR. Um, like re reproductions of um, obscure avant-garde electronic music LPs and um, that was run by someone in um, Greenland but it turned out to be Keith Ferlton Whitman formerly known as Hvatsky and uh, who runs the Mimaroglulu web, uh, website You know about Bruno Mini, of course, huh? Yes, yes, I've done some, uh, I've released quite a... Yeah, 
because I want to have friends and I want to belong, yeah, John. That's uh, how you do it, right? GBL is the smartest of us all. jazz record uh, with mostly American uh, musicians and one of my favorite covers from a jazz record for some reason. to wrench people here. If someone knows, let me know. Thank you Dubs for uh, being uh, <laughs> really helpful. Ah, 
Okay, John. Ah, uh, nice. Such a cool cover. Yeah, some reason for some reason America has some of the coolest covers. <laughs> I love these plain colors. <laughs> yeah, so these features, uh, what's great about this record is it features Al Shorter, Wayne Shorter's uh, brother, who is so much more interesting to me. We also have Bobby Few, Clifford uh, Thornton, Joseph Jarman, Mohamed Ali on drums, and some French guys like Chibiril. And this is a choral rock, which is um, a composition by Al the Shorter. Yeah, who was it who said that he, <laughs> he felt this could be faster? Well, I guess uh, when this was uh, recorded in um, late 60s, the drugs got like heavier, right? but it might be like a legacy show, who knows, maybe it will be good. Dawn of the Dead, I have it somewhere here. Trunk Records put out the, um, 
the original soundtrack from the American version, which is only like sound effects and library soundtrack um, tracks. It's pretty good. In let me try to find it. This one should be a nice surprise for um, for Zep. Hey Alan, <laughs> you did? <laughs> this is um, Jan von Drugenbroek from uh, Buckethead. Uh, uh, brain Ticket, Brain, brain Ticket, sorry. It's a library record of his, Industrial Retrospect, on the Color Sound label. Yeah. soundtracks. Most of them are very expensive nowadays. They used to be quite cheap. These days are gone, but some of these they get reissued. I got a half a dozen of them and I wish I had more. <laughs> yeah, they is really a good band but um, I don't know it was like a band that was heavily mined samples by um, 
uh, hip hop, funk, stuff like that. No, no, not all are expensive. They are scarce, so sometimes people take advantage of it. But a lot of them are are shit as well, Tracy. All right, so yeah, 15, 20 more minutes, and we'll uh, round this out uh, with a nice uh, two and a half hour stream. So the jazz bums can breathe a little before <laughs> go. Where should I go next, huh? Oh, we didn't see Joey Rose this evening. Interesting. Slow fucker. <laughs> This geezer. Oh, super. <laughs> Man, I, I tried to listen uh, to my old uh, Super Chunk records uh, a couple, couple of years ago. Man. Oof. I had the two first ones and a single, and I saw them. I, I can't listen to that anymore. Ah, okay. Interesting. <laughs> I did that last week You're already ending with coil. Huh. No, I, I wanted to listen to this a little. It's been quite some time. But if you guys want to uh, have suggestions, feel free. That is quite heavy music. That, that is some of the, the heaviest and most disturbing music ever. I don't know if I've already played it, uh, Zeb, but it's a fantastic record. I talked about it many times. Almost 30 
40 years old. Point Tubby. I love the melody here. That uh, John will find, find fun, and this one. And yeah, yeah, guys, if you like this, uh, like the video, comment, share it, and if you can help, love it, uh, <laughs> especially for the the record fair trip for for next week. The tipping jar uh, in the description of the video. If you can, always helpful and appreciated. Yeah, I'll play a record I've talked about before. Uh, talked about before. And I guess this goes to. Uh, I'm gonna have to wonder when you're gonna wake up. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, and you like it, Alan? What is the difference between Alan March and uh, the Static Traveler, by the way? <laughs> Explain. Uh, you wonder when you're gonna wake up. Ah, I thought you might have been uh, <laughs> our friend Alan, static traveler.
this part, this is insane. Song written by Michael Mukok. It's a crazy track with the vocoder who plays the, um, the demonic sword, Stormbringer. And now, the last track for today. Yeah. Yeah, Michael Moorcock wrote the lyrics for that Loisters Cult uh, song. And it's a direct reference to Elric. Okay.
Africa, it's probably the, the funkiest, uh, heaviest, uh, most dance floor tune from The Cure. And it's a B-side. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> to below, you have to comment, you have to watch back the stream. This is the last song. <laughs> this guy, Seashell Love, is a fucking great musician, and um, I don't know if I can tell <laughs> who he is, but a major, major influence and uh, a great guy. So, I hope you guys had fun, and um, and that's it. Comment, like, subscribe, tip, whatever. I'll see you next week from the record fair and from Michael. Maybe we'll do something, uh, an improv uh, sort of uh, stunty. <laughs> Sorry, I got stunty tonight, but um, I'm sure it will be fun. Anyways, uh, it was nice to see you all. It was a really fun stream to, uh, tonight. and. Um, I liked uh, most of the interaction <laughs> and, and uh, the porn bo boats were, were very beautiful tonight. So, parfait. Good night, guys. Cheers.